All right, you guys, what's going on? It's Resto, and we're going to get into the gear guide, or just guide in general. It's going to be a little bit of a short one, something that you guys aren't usually used to seeing. Um, normally, I get more in-depth with this. Uh, let's do a take two, because last time my mic was muted. So <laughs> anyways, get into the gear. So we're going into Helm of Secret Knowledge. Um, this is going to be a quest reward, guys, I believe from Grim Batol. Uh, I went ahead and put 44 stamina on here, and we're remastering everything into either crit or mastery. Nothing else matters. Um, when it comes down to the 44 stamina, the reason why I did that is with fully buffed, I'm at over that 100k threshold with the stamina, and that's kind of what I want to help with fights. Um, if I didn't go with the stamina, I think it puts me at 99k, and I didn't like that. So that's what I'm going with. Um, if you want to go full glass cannon and throw on the enchant that comes from uh, Wrath of the Lich King from the Sons of Hodir, uh, there is a head enchant for attack power and some crit, um, similar to the shoulder enchant. So if you guys don't care about the stamina, you don't want to hit that threshold and get up, up that health, by all means, go for it. Up to you. There is no preference. Or there is a preference, but there is no right or wrong. Um, when it comes to the neck for the Feral Druid, at least, what I did is went for this neck for the specifically for the hit rating. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reforge the expertise into mastery. And I went with this because I just want to max out agility. I don't really care about any of the other things um, that the other necks have to offer that I will show you in other classes. Everything that I've made a video on, guys, I'm going to be making a guide for. So do not worry. Uh, when it comes to the shoulders... Uh, this comes from Halls of Origination, by the way. Uh, when it comes to the shoulders, this is from a quest that comes from City, the Lost City. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put the 40 attack power, 15 crit from Hodir. Uh, go ahead and reforge Haste into Mastery. Haste is irrelevant in this expansion when it comes to uh, Feral Druids. Other like other expansions, that's when Haste actually matters. So we're focusing on Crit, Mastery, and Kata, though. Um, so when it comes down to this one, super easy. You just think you kill the first boss, or maybe it's the second or the last boss, one of the two. Regardless, it's a quest, super easy to get. Not much to this. Uh, when it comes to the cloak, we're looking at the Kaliki cloak. This also comes from Lost City. Uh, this is going to come from the first boss. We're going to put 70 spell pen on here. We don't even need to reforge anything because it has everything that we need from hit to mastery. Um, the reason why we want to put 70 spell pen on here. You don't want your spells to be resisted, guys. So we're looking at our fairy fire, we're looking at our entangling roots, and we're even looking at our cyclone. We don't want any of that to be resisted. So spell pen is 100% needed for me. I like to have 120 spell pen minimum. Um, that's a good threshold to have to bypass any of the buffs. Um, I know when it comes to like... Uh, shadow resistance that goes to 120 so like you just want to get to that part right there I never get resisted at 120 so that's what I recommend for you guys uh, when it comes to the chest we're looking at the sly fox jerkin this has everything that we need to the T from crit and mastery uh, we're gonna put a 50 spell pen gem in here to get us to that threshold when it comes to the my feral druid what I did is what I matched the gems to the sockets to give me the bonuses because it gave me the crit mastery that I need I know a lot of feral druids on this server at least I shouldn't say a lot because I, I actually rarely see them um, but the sum that I have seen just go full agility I don't really care for that um, so I went ahead and did this route if you don't want to copy me don't this is just the gear that I have um, this is 20 stats that are going to go on this. Uh, all the enchants, since you're in 84, you're going to have the 85 enchants, so that's nice. Um, when it comes to the bracers, you're looking at the Poison Fang bracers. This comes from the first boss in Halls. Uh, threw on 50 agility on this. I reforged the hit, or not the hit, the haste to mastery, because haste doesn't matter. And then I went with the Saliza Spear, uh, crit mastery. No question about that. Throw 130 agility on that. This is going to be your best in slot polar. When it comes to the relics, you're looking at the exhausted flash growth moat. 40 agility in that. Uh, hit mastery. Don't need to reforge. It's got everything as well. Uh, a lot of the gear is blessed for feral druids because a lot of it is already mastery crit hit whatever it is. It's always there you really you really rarely have to reforge uh, looking at the gloves we're looking at the thar tox inimitable gauntlets i can't say that uh throw on 65 mastery the reason why we're looking at improving our mastery for the bleeds uh, right now my bleed ability is at 62 percent uh, for increased damage 
This also helps with Savage defense ability if you're in bear form as well. But anyways, right now I'm at 19.89 with 38% crit. Um, you guys seen the video, super nice, big bleeds, big dam, super nice. Uh, this glove comes from a rare uh, that is in Hydral. Uh, he should be up a lot. When a Cataclasic comes out, I don't see this going for more than 200 gold, if I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's a common glove to get, um, especially with Cataclasic. A lot of people are going to be in Hydral. It's just going to be a fluent thing. He's always going to be seen. You may not see him when you're trying to farm him, but somebody else will. They'll either equip it or put it on the auction house. Uh, most people are going to put it on the auction house. So... Be sure to look out for that one. It's a 100% drop, so it's always going to drop from him no matter what. So there is that too. Uh, when it comes to the belt, this comes from Halls, the very last boss, the Sun boss. Uh, I went ahead and put 40 hit on here. Guys, you want to make sure your hit is at 5% for melee, 4% for casters. But like I said, I'm going to go through every single class that I displayed, so you're going to see all the stats and information on that as well. Uh, this belt, uh, good luck. We're going to reforge this from haste to mastery, but good luck. It is a pain to farm because it's the last boss. You have to go through all that nonsense just to farm it. Same thing with, uh, which boss, which boss, which, oh, the boots. We're getting to the boots next, but yeah, same thing with the boots. Last boss. It sucks. They don't like the drop. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, pants, we're looking at the swift light leggings. I like went full stuttered mode there. Uh, this is going to be a reputation grind. Now, when it comes to the uh, this rep, you are going to be spending at least two hours um, farming this. So, I mean, this is the only pain that's going to come to 84 twinking is the rep grinds. You got to farm two reps, which is the Wild Hammer Clan and the Guardians of Hygel uh, for Horde and Alliance. Um, so, that's the only thing. I think Dragon Maw is been replaced for wild hammer for horde and wild hammer is the alliance and then guardians of hydral should be for both factions but i know dragon maw and wild hammer are the two factions for horde and alliance um but yeah super easy to get once you get that you just buy it from the vendor for like i think it was like 113 gold so go ahead and get that um put the 20 agility 20 mastery on here so that way we're benefiting from both the socket bonus and the off stats that are being offered so we want to make sure we get that that's what i went for like i said if you do not care for the 20 agility 20 mastery and the socket bonus stuff just put agility in it and go full agility it's completely up to you that's what i do that's what i will do when cataclysmic does come out too um, and i went put 85 stamina 45 agility this is a Wrath of the Lich King, I want to say Wrath of the Lich King enchant, um, the 85 stamina, 45 agility. Uh, when it comes to the boots, this, like I said, this is coming from the last boss in the Lost City. Uh, I went with the 25 agility, the cat swiftness, uh, minor speed. Now, if you want to go full mastery, you can put the 50 mastery on boots on this instead of the cat swiftness enchant. Completely up to you what you want to do. Me, I'm more looking at the minor speed 25 agility isn't that much however it's the minor speed that i'm looking at it's going to help me within the battlefield it's going to help me catch up to people like there's a lot of things that go into having that minor speed that give you the advantage even kiting it gives you a good advantage at that because you're having that extra lever over the other person to get away um, but like i said if you're not really too concerned about that your play style isn't like mine um, go ahead and put 50 mastery on that boost your mastery boost your bleeds get bigger damage completely up to you for the rings uh we're going with the ring of dun al gaz this is coming from grim patrol the second boss you're going to go ahead and reforge hit into mastery i'm pretty sure yeah I, I, you reforge haste into hit for this one so that way this will give you the five percent yeah that's right i didn't mention that my bad my bad but this you're going to take the hit away and go into mastery now you're probably wondering why didn't you just keep the or why don't you just keep the hit and keep the haste here and make it crit? Well, if you take that away, you'll realize the percentages. So, for example, let's say I took away the 40 hit, right? The lowest amount. It's going to drop it down to a 4.74 or not 40, 4.71. Um, so you need very minuscule, like maybe like 10, 10 hit needs to be removed to be exactly 5% or something like that. But so obviously it's not going to matter. But anyways... You're going to take the hit, put it into mastery, give you the extra boost, and then you're going to go with the Ring of Blinding Stars. You're going to go ahead and change the haste to crit. Um, this, These two rings right here are going to be your go-to. There's really no 
ifs, ands, or buts. This is basically a cookie cutter uh, ring setup for any agility class that you're going for, even for rogues. Um, I know rogues have an option to change it out, but for feral druids at least, this is your go-to. Uh, now, when it comes to trinkets, I went with the medallion of the alliance. Uh, obviously, you have to get out of stuns, um, but I also went with Tia's grace, which is a huge mastery boost. Um, however, the bis is from alchemy, which also gives you a mastery boost. Um, it gives you a 40% increase when you consume any potion and then also gives you a gem socket that you can put on as well. Now, you're probably asking why I don't have that is because I'm on a private server. Don't recommend joining this, yada, yada, yada. But I just wanted to test things out and kind of figure out what was nice, how classes performed. So I'm not like true bis, you know, when it comes to professions and stuff. However, I could still tell you what to go for. Second profession, no matter what, is alchemy. Go alchemy. That trinket is so nice to have. It's too good to pass up. Now, for the first profession, what you're going to have is two options. You can either go engineering and get all the gadgets. You know, any PvP -er knows what engineering has to offer and why it's this. However, if you don't care about the gadgets, you don't see yourself using that, etc., you're going to go ahead and swap that out for leatherworking. And you're wondering, why would I use leatherworking? Well, you get enchants out of that. Every profession offers an enchant. Tailoring offers the cloak. Leatherworking offers bracers and legs. Enchanting gives you rings, etc., you know list goes on so instead of 50 agility you can have 130 agility on your bracers instead of going with the 85 stamina 45 agility you can go with 110 tack power and i think it's like 45 agility or something like that um you can go with that yeah 45 agility 110 attack power so you can go with that um however just know you're sacrificing 850 stamina for this as well so i probably wouldn't swap out the attack power and agility because that would mean i would have to go 40 attack power the uh ap enchant for the helm and then go ap enchant for the uh pants I had a little stutter moment there. Um, however, if you are going glass cannon, you know, swap those out. But if you're not, obviously go with the stamina. That's what I went for. Um, but I would swap out 130 agility for the 50 agility. Obviously, it's nothing but benefits. So <laughs> go with that. Um, but that's if you're going leatherworking. If not, go engineering. Engineering and alchemy are going to be your go-to. Um, when it comes to the talents, this is a whole new story. So this is what I'm running for my talents. Um, now, this is what I've seen. I've seen people take away thick hide and natural reaction and put it into fury swipes. That is a thing. I have done that. Um, it doesn't hurt. It's not bad. However, uh, when it comes to a feral druid, I like to have a little bit more defensiveness on my hands. So I put two into natural reaction. What that's going to do is reduce the damage taken while in bear form by 18% and increases your dodge while in bear form by 6%. And you generate three rage every time you dodge while in bear form. This is really nice because if you're being like completely manhandled, you can swap into bear, have that extra resistance on top of the already bonuses that you get from bear form. So that's why I went with natural reaction uh, for pvp and then that extra point i went ahead and put it into thick hide um, this increases your armor contribution from cloth and leather items by four percent increases the armor value uh, while in bear form by an additional 26 percent and reduces the chance you'll get critically hit by melee attacks by two percent so it's more so looking at the armor value increasing that that's why i went with this um I went ahead and took away a point from Primal Madness as well. Uh, I believe I put it into Feral Aggression. You can have one or two. That's completely up to you. Uh, but for me, I put it all into Feral Aggression and took it away from here. And then obviously the go-to, the Natural Shapeshifter, Master Shapeshifter is a must. You're getting a increased crit by 4% in your cat form. That is big. You definitely want that. That is a must. Uh, when it comes to Fury, that is completely up to you guys. If you guys want to go three, two is all I need. Two is all you ever will need. That is this go with two. Uh, it grants you a 66% chance to gain rage when you shapeshift into bear form. Allows you to keep up to 66 of your energy when in shapeshift into cat form and increases your maximum mana by 10%. Um, so it's more so of keeping your stats while you're swapping and shapeshifting. Like I said, if you want to go three and have 100% all the time and have an increased mana, that's up to you. The mana is irrelevant. That's more so boomkin. It's more so keeping the rage and the energy. 
So it's completely up to you if whether you want to go three. Like I said, I went two, but this is my talent setup and what I ran. Uh, moving on to the glyphs, what we're looking at here is the glyph of Berserk, increasing your duration of Berserk by 10 seconds. This is going to be your opener, guys. This is your burst. This is, or I should say your opener, but this is your burst. You want this. Increase it. Make it longer. Have fun. Moving on to the other one, you're going glyph of Rip. For obvious reasons, you're increasing the periodic damage of your Rip by 15%. A lot of your damage, guys, comes from Rip. You want that. Uh, when it comes to uh, the other one, the other major, you're looking at Glyph of Mingle. For obvious reasons, you're increasing the damage done by Mingle by 10%. If you can't get any shreds off, you're going to have to Mingle. So this is what's nice to have. Uh, moving on to the miners. Now, I think it was the miners. Or no, yep, it's yep the miners. So these are these. So I have Glyph of Dash, Glyph of Mark of the Wild, and Glyph of Unburdened Rebirth. So these two right here are set in stone. You'll never swap. Always have, must have. This is this is a must. Um, have these. This, however, can be swapped out. If you don't care to have the cost of Mark of Wild reduced by 50%, um, go ahead and have aquatic form. Increases your swim speed by 50% while in aquatic forms. It's nice for a Rathy Basin. Um, or even the, I can't think of the other flag cap map, uh, Twin Peaks, I think it is. Yes. So you want to have that for that. So that way you can kind of swim around and get past things. Um, super nice to have as well if you want to have it for that aspect. Um, but if you don't care about that, then obviously go for Mark of the Wild. So that way you can rebuff your team, um, etc. Now, when it comes to the major glyphs, so these are the prime glyphs, prime glyphs, major glyphs, there we go, a little flip-flopped here, I have uh, glyph of fairy fire, or fairy fire, uh, glyph of bark skin, and glyph of feral charge, fairy fire, for obvious reasons, you're increasing that fairy uh, ability by 10 yards, this is a must, this will never be swapped, glyph of bark skin reduces the chance that you'll be critically hit by 25% while embarrassed or while bark skin is active and then glyph of feral charge this is just reducing the cooldowns of your charges in bear and cat form um, so those are basically like set in stone you're not changing those out for anything nothing else here matters um, I know I I have seen somebody do glyph of uh, ferocious bite your ferocious bite ability heals you for 1% of your maximum health for each 10 energy used if you want to have that I mean go for it I don't recommend that. Your major glyphs are going to be set in stone as well. Same with your prime. These are going to be your go-to. The only thing you're really going to be swapping out is this for aquatic form. Because there's really nothing else in the prime glyphs that you're going to be wanting to swap out for. Because it's all PvE. This is the PvP setup. So prime majors are set in stone. This is your cookie cutter setup. Like I said, the only thing you can swap out is that. Um, but honestly, that is honestly it. That's all I'm getting into. I'm not getting too deep into it. I hope I was able to explain a lot. I'm going to go ahead and do all the classes, like I said before, um, that I produced on the channel. So stand by for that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. hope you guys learned something new. I will get more in depth when Cataclasm comes out. So stay tuned. It's been Resto, guys. See you guys next time.